G'day, bloody dickheads, vaping fucking bogan. Back once again, but no fucking review today, dickheads. I'll tell you straight up why it's not a review, is always involved with the design and development of this project. I'm not gonna, you know, review something that, uh, you know, I was involved with developing and, and obviously compensated for my fucking time and effort. I'm talking about the Jackaroo kit from Vandy Vape. It's a little single 21700 IP67 rated mod. What that means is it's dustproof, waterproof, shock proof, which is pretty awesome. Comes with this little uh, sub tank. I think they also call the Jackaroo on here. And it has some awesome G10 panels, which I really like this material, G10. Uh, we'll talk about that a bit later. Anyway, dickheads, as I said, it's not a fucking review because I was involved with the uh, the development of this one. It doesn't have, you know, the Vaping Bogan name on it like the Bonza uh, does, simply because it wasn't my idea and it wasn't my little baby from the beginning. Uh, you know, the Bonza shit, my idea, my development, 100% my involvement, nothing on that fucking device was sort of okayed without my approval. This little project, a little bit more of a collaboration. Vandy Vape came to me with the idea, uh, they'd already sort of started some of the design work. I really liked the idea of dustproof, waterproof, shockproof, you know, lifeproof mods. There's not a lot of them to choose from, there's really only the, the Geek Vape Aegis, two, two or so mods and one other that no one cares about because it was fucking huge. <laughs> But uh, yeah, no real dedicated 21700 dustproof, um, you know, waterproof, shockproof mod. So I thought, yeah, Vandy, that's a fucking good idea. And uh, yeah, I like some of the stuff they've done. Obviously brought in some of my own uh, influence and, uh, and things. But yeah, it wasn't a, a vaping bogan project from the beginning. That's why it doesn't have the fucking name on there. But uh, yeah, just to give you a bit of background, I was involved in it. Hence why this is not a fucking review. It is going to be a bit of a fucking battle test though, dickheads. We're going to beat the shit out of this fucker. We're going to uh, get it into the the water. We're going to uh, get it some, some physical contact, maybe with a, a car. <laughs> we'll run this fucker over and uh, yeah, we will we'll kick the shit out of it around the place, see how much shock it can take. So uh, yeah, that's basically what this video is about, the battle test. But We'll do some uh, quick little ins and outs on it and, uh, you know, have a beer. Let's get into that first. Before we do that, though, let's mention some vape advocacy, as always, dickheads. As you know, around the world, governments, fuckwits, are trying to over-regulate and restrict vaping. In the United States, you've got big battles with the FDA and flavour banning seems to be the, uh, the big problem over there. Here in, in Australia, we've just had the South Australian government bring in some absolutely terrible legislation that's going to put everything vape-related in with tobacco. I've talked about it. No more vape shops with with you know vaping or testers or samples no more online sales yeah it's pretty fucked so some links in the description to where australians can write your local member of parliament because we need to tell the federal pollies that we're not voting for anyone that ain't pro vaping this next federal election is going to be a one chance to get this right so please go down to some of those links for the advocacy down below all right let's have a beer dickheads we're gonna have this wavy ipa it uh is a big fucking double hopped a, a uh, rat rotationally hopped double india pale ale by steel water uh artisanal brewing a hefty fucking eight bloody percent on this one that's about all I can tell you. Let's see how she tastes. Well, there you go, dickheads. Looks like an IPA to me. It's got that orangey fucking yellow complexion. Pretty healthy bit of head there, but we like lots of head, don't we? On the nose. Definitely smells like an IPA to me. Tropical, fruity, hoppy. Cheers, dickheads. Oh, that is nice. That is nice. That is really fucking nice. Really well balanced, much like the uh, the beer we had yesterday, I think it was, the uh, the big victory. Really nice balance between the sort of bitey, hoppy notes and that sort of malty finish. A little bit more citrus, I reckon, in this one. Mmm. I'm getting like sort of grapefruit and, uh, and pineapple and, um, yeah, citrusy. Really nice and citrusy. Fucking super refreshing. It's a bit hot here down in South Australia. Mm -mm. Good shit. Let's pair it up with a juice, eh? Got a new one here from a fellow reviewer, Sir Vapolot, over in the UK. This is his little, uh, this new fucking uh, line called Champ Sauce. <laughs> fucking on your champ. Bloody good one, mate. Hey, on your champ. 
<laughs> this flavor is called Tidal Shot, and it is a uh, a cranberry fucking peach fizz. Cranberry peach fizz, I think it was. Is that what it says here? Blood orange, that's right, I was forgetting something. There's cranberry, blood orange, peach fizz, and uh, yeah, I've been liking it. I've been enjoying it, mate. It's fucking got a nice little fizzy tingle there in the, uh, the blood orange. That should go well with this sort of citrusy fucking IPA. We'll see. Mm. That is going nicely, that is going fucking nicely. Yeah, the citruses are just fucking bouncing off each other. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. The fucking blood orange and the cranberry going really nicely with that fucking beer. Anyway, dickheads, uh, I forgot to mention earlier what I'm using in here at the moment. Uh, I've got the 0.3 ohm coil. There's two coils that come with it, a 0.15 and a 0.3 uh, coil. 60 watts, I think, maximum, which is what I'm running at the moment. And uh, yeah, it's doing real nicely. But anyway, what we're gonna do, quickly jump down to the up close camera. I'll just give you a quick run through on uh, the sort of exterior of the mod and what she looks like. And then we will go and beat the fuck out of this thing and see how much it can handle. You know, usual deal with a, any life proof fucking mod. <coughs> Excuse me, let's get in and have a squiz. All oh, fucking right, dickhead. So the packaging my Jackaroos came in was just sample packaging, so there's no point in showing you that. Yours will be different for all the retail, but obviously you will get the Jackaroo mod and you get the Jackaroo sub tank. You get a spare glass section, so this one will hold you five mils of fucking juice. The pre-installed straight glass will hold you 3.5 mils. Micro USB cord for charging and updating. Spare O-rings. Battery adapter if you want to run your 18 to 650 batteries. Safety card, warranty card, and you user manual and there are a few sort of key specs that I would point out in here that I know a few people will want to know. It does fire down to a 0.05 ohms even in power mode. It'll give you up to 8 volts of discharge which is great and uh, it does obviously support temp control and all that sort of stuff. 100 fucking watts maximum output but yeah you know Probably won't do that for very long. You got a 0.15 ohm uh, mesh coil pre-installed that'll run you 50 to sort of 8, 90 watts. And then you've also got a spare one, which I think is much more suited to this type of single battery device, a 0.3 ohm coil, 40 to 60 watts. Um, also mesh. So uh, yeah, I think this one here is much, much more suited to a single battery device being the lower wattage, higher resistance. And here she fucking is, dickhead. So... Obviously being IP67 rated, it is all sort of covered in a, uh, a rubber silicon kind of finish. Uh, they've both got uh, resin and G panels available. So this is one of the G10 panels, which I really like. G10s are a really, really hard um, you know, material. I don't know whether it's like a type of plastic, but it's extremely hard. They use it on gun handles and knife handles um, and, uh, and weapons and stuff like that because of its extremely tough properties. And they've got some really nice fucking patterns on the G10s. This is just a couple of them, but there's a bunch of others out there as well. Really, really like this. This sort of chiseled black one looks fucking awesome. Uh, then you got the, uh, the blues and the greens in resin. And again, they have a bunch of other sort of resin colors out there if you're more into the swirly resin sort of stuff. But uh, yeah, I like that G10 shit. I reckon that's pretty dope. Nice big fire button up the top here. Positive, negative buttons down the bottom there. You've basically then got your venting, similar to the way other dustproof mods have done it, where there's like a little rubber thing underneath here with a pin thing. Then if it air or gas starts to push on that, it basically breaks the seal and allows gas to vent. You've got a, uh, a battery cap down the bottom here. Obviously being, uh, again, IP67, you've got to have something you can seal really well and the screw-in telescopic caps work just great. Uh, you've got positive end in first. You probably can't see it in there, but there is a little positive marking. You've got negative marked out here. Obviously, this is all sealed. Um, when I was developing this with uh, Vandy Vape, I tried really, really hard to turn this little flick thing here into a uh, bottle opener, but we just couldn't get it to work very well, and we're worried about threading and things like that becoming damaged over time um, if you're constantly opening beers. So, yeah, sorry, dickheads. That one didn't come to fruition, but, uh, yeah, we did try to make this a, a bottle opener as well. Didn't work. <laughs> um, that's basically the exterior. You've got a vertical screen. We'll have a look at that in a fucking moment. Up the top here, you've got, you know, just a standard spring-loaded 510. Uh, you can accept a pretty wide atomizer if you wanted to put, say, like a 30 millimeter uh, tank on here. You fucking could, but uh, there you go. 
little bit of sort of overhang on the front there, but it will accept pretty large addies. You got Jackaroo engraved across the top here. Now Jackaroo was actually a name that I did come up with. If uh, if you're Australian, you'd probably recognize a Jackaroo. Jackaroos are kind of like a, an Australian ranch hand. Someone that works way out in the uh, the country on, on big cattle stations, mustering cattle or shearing sheep, doing all the fucking dirty farm jobs way out in the middle of nowhere. It's tough to dirty. Uh, duff. It's a tough, dirty work. <laughs> so I thought uh, Jackaroo was a, a good name for something that was, uh, you know, a dustproof, waterproof, shockproof mod. All right. Be good if you're a, if you're a fucking Jackaroo, I reckon. <laughs> now the tank, um, I had really nothing to do with uh, apart from uh, sort of telling Vandy Vape not to do the the push open top cap thing. They were originally going to have a, a slide mechanism, um, which I'm not a big fan of. I think the twist is much more secure. And this is one of those little nice half quarter twists that we uh, we went with. So you just sort of grab it, you give it a, a twist, and it's on. That's it. You don't need to do uh, a big. Sh -sh 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 Twist off, twist on, fucking pretty quick. Uh, I said it holds you three and a half mils with the straight, five mils with the uh, the bubble window, pretty simple Cyclops airflow. Um, it does have a 510 drip tip up the top there. It's got the O-rings on the inside of the tank, which is always good to see. And uh, yeah, it is a, a decent little sort of lower wattage sub tank with the, with the 0.3 ohm coil in there. Not bad at all, not bad. So a quick little squeeze at the menu, one, two, three, four, five clicks, we'll turn it on, up pops the little Vandy vape thing, there's your screen layout, so you've basically got the voltage being applied over here, you've got the resistance of your coil up on the top right hand corner there, the 0.31, you've got what mode you're in, power, wattage being displayed there, 60 watts, you've got a puff counter underneath that, you've got the seconds that you just vaped, you've got the percentage of your battery and a battery bar, and whether the mod is locked or unlocked. If I give it a sort of positive and negative I can lock it you can still fire the device but I can't adjust anything here now the menu system is very much the same as the pulse X had where you can turn on and off the menu function so if I give it one two three clicks the little P starts flashing in there and then I could cycle through the different uh, modes at the moment I've only got power and voltage mode on because I've turned off the other functions on the menu so if I go and hold the positive and negative for a few seconds we can go in here and then you can see there's also a TC I can flick that on and then there's a bypass mode I can turn that on and then there's also this one and if we hold down the fire button to get back to the menu system now if I go one two three clicks I've got voltage mode then I've got stainless steel temp control mode I've got nickel uh, temp control you got titanium temp control and then you are back to power and you've got bypass as well. Bypass is like we've seen in other mods where it just sort of gives you the voltage left in your battery. Um, so yeah, dickhead, it's got uh, that same ability to turn the uh, the different modes on and off, the ones that you don't need. So for me, as I said, all I want is voltage and, and power. Um, so I just left those on, turned the rest off. Hold down that uh, positive and negative button for a few seconds. Uh, obviously, we've just had a look at the menu functions to turn on and off. This here is obviously your brightness, as usual, with the little sun man. Uh, you've then got your sleep timer. You can change that. Uh, you've then got your puff reset on your puff counter. Pretty self-explanatory. You've got the version that the chip is. You've got the ID. And the only other thing to show you is the DIY or the sort of memory functions. If I go in here, I can change to D1, D2, D3, D4, D5, and you can save, you know, preset wattages or temp control um, functions. So, uh, yeah, there's that if you like to do that. Um, and save your shit. To get back out of the sort of uh, memory mode, you just go to the DP and you just lock that in. Now we're back into power. So that's about it. You know, it's got all the basic functions in there. You know, your, your screen brightness, screen timeout, uh, you know, all the different modes that you'd need. Yeah, that's pretty, uh, pretty sort of extensive, but not getting too bloody complicated. So there you go, dickheads. That is the fucking ship. There's the bloody mods. Uh, let's go and smash one of these fuckers up and just see how much of a beating it can bloody handle. All right, dickhead, so first of the fucking battle tests is the crush test. We're gonna chuck it under the old Subi, the Scooby-Doo, the Subaru, and see if we can fucking crush the shit out of this fucker. I don't reckon we will, but uh, we'll give it a go. So 
we'll run the fucker over and as you can see one side has been sort of scratched up a little from the uh, the pavers but uh, screen looks just fucking fine everything else fine battery cap no issues yep no problems with that fucker so on to the next one let's go see if we can fucking drown it <laughs> so it survived the water test. Let's see what else we can throw at this thing. And then maybe we'll throw this thing at some things. <laughs> There you go, dickheads. Salt water, sand, rocks, run it over with a fucking car, peg it across the ground, just holding up beautifully. None of the panels have cracked, none of the fucking buttons have fallen off, nothing's come away. I mean, it's got dents and dings and scratches and stuff, but nothing's, nothing's fallen off this. And it's still fucking working, as it should. Anyway. We'll get back to the fucking studio and wrap this thing up.
All fucking right, dickhead. So, after its little beating, this is the result. Uh, I'm pretty fucking impressed, to be honest. Uh, obviously, we've got some sort of chipping and grazing here on the uh, the G10 panel. Most of that was from when I was running it over with the car and it was sort of rubbing on the pavers. Uh, around the front here, obviously, you can see some heavy hits around the place. Up the top there, some big chunky fucking dings as it impacted those rocks. Um, down the bottom here, you can see it's taken quite a few sort of beatings um, all over the place, but it still works fine. Now, there does look like there's a bit of uh, water underneath that screen. Uh, I would assume that it's like previous sort of um, IP67 mods where the, the waterproofing is actually underneath that screen. So let's just take off these screws, see if we can clean that up. And yeah, like you can see with the Aegis and with this uh, Jackaroo, the waterproofing sort of component of it is actually underneath this this faceplate here. So even though you've got some um, some water and some sand and that sort of thing in underneath the screen there, that's actually not going to affect the performance of the mod because the ceiling and the, the IP60 sort of stuff is actually underneath that faceplate. That's where all your rubber is around here and here, and obviously you've got another cover on that screen there. So pretty easy, if you do get dust, grit, grime, water, whatever else underneath your outer plate, simply unscrew and uh, clean it up, and then you can pop it back on there and uh, away you bloody go. This is also how you get to the micro USB port should you need to do any updating on the chip if Vandivate releases any sort of upgrades on the firmware, you undo those four screws, you can plug in your micro USB and you're able to update the chip on there. So uh, I'll clean this fucker up and uh, we'll see you fuckers up top. Wrap this up. So there you go, dickheads, the torture test, the battle test on the fucking Jackaroo. And as you can see, off the jetty, into the water, into the sand, back into the water, into the watery sand, on the fucking rocks, against the wall. Doesn't matter what I fucking did to it. It took it. It took it like a fucking champ and uh, still working just fine. So obviously, if you do end up in the water, your coil is, is going to end up fucked, but you know, you replace the coil and away you go. Mod's fine. Um, after I took the plate off and cleaned the water out from underneath it, water's gone, the mod is sealed, you know, there's no water getting into the electronics or the battery or anything like that. There was no ba water in the battery compartment. So yeah, impressed with the fucking uh, weatherproofing on this one. But uh, yeah, dickheads, as I said earlier, this is not a fucking review. This is just my little, you know, show and tell of, uh, of the work that I've done with, uh, with this one. Uh, as I said, because I was involved with the designing uh, of it and, uh, you know, obviously I get compensated for that. I'm not going to do a review. There's no pros and cons or final thoughts. I'll let you cunts make up your own mind as to whether you think it's any good. Go and watch some of the other reviews out there. Uh, there's a few already and see what others have got to say because, as I said, you know, I'm not going to fucking review my own, you know, fucking stuff. <laughs> Anyway, that's about it for me, dickheads. Uh, Price-wise, you're looking at around about the sort of 60 to 80 US dollars for the kit. Um, I saw a bunch of US websites have already got it. My V Pro have got it up. Element Vape have got it up, um, and a bunch of others. I think in the UK you can pick it up again for you know that sort of 50, 60 pounds sort of thing. So yeah, pretty cheap, pretty affordable, and what you'd expect to pay you know for this type of mod. So with that, dickheads, I'll get the fuck out of here. I'll put my usual Instagram and Facebook links down below for you to check out what I want to do, what I'm doing outside of the fucking YouTube videos. And uh, obviously, remember, I do run an independent channel. So uh, yeah, always hit up my support links listed down below. Other than that, sub on your fucking dicks off or your tits off. Don't care whether it's a weatherproof mod, dustproof mod, whether it's got no fucking proofing at all and it's cheap as shit. As long as you're not banging the bungers, that is all that fucking matters. Cheers for tuning in. Cheery fucking oh. <laughs>